Welcome and thank you for joining us this afternoon. We'd like to introduce our moderator, documentary producer and Los Angeles Film School Class of 2000 alumnus, Mario Navoa. Welcome everyone watching on this live stream through YouTube or Facebook or Instagram. I know we're live on multiple fronts. My name is Mario Navoa. I am an alumnus of the Los Angeles Film School, class of 2000. Happy to be here uh, moderating this conversation with Danny Hastings. I just wanted to quickly say, uh, as the president of the uh, Los Angeles Film School Alumni Association, it's always good to connect with uh, the more recent grads of our school. But, you know, I go way back with uh, some of our uh, alumni from way back in the day. Um, when we used to be analog, and I was just talking about going from analog to digital, so now we're in the digital space. Um, but uh, yeah, without further ado, um, I wanted to, we're, you know, we're honored to welcome um, passionate multi-hyphenate Danny Hastings for a chat about getting your work seen. Danny created the official Latino Film Festival in 2015 in response to the lack of Latinx representation in Hollywood films and TV shows. Um, he's gonna talk about how the festival, the film festival circuit works, uh, what judges are looking for, what's most important, um, how to build a window where you find an opportunity when those doors are closing. Uh, so, you know, we definitely want to get into the film festival. Um, I wanna just to share a brief bio of Danny's history. Um, he is a passionate world renowned photographer, videographer, director and founder uh, with over 150 album covers and 40 music videos under his belt. Hastings has also shot and designed an unprecedented number of album covers for some of the biggest names in the industry. He's worked alongside P. Diddy, Taylor Momsen, Mark Anthony, Jodeci, Wu-Tang, Eminem, KRS-One, Jay-Z, Tribe Called Quest, Jiro the Damaja. Jiro, Jiro the Jiro. Damaja. All right. The Damaja. To, to, to name a few. <laughs> In uh, 2015, uh, Danny started the annual official Latino Film Festival to provide opportunities to Latinx filmmakers and actors in the US due to the lack of representation of his community in film and TV, as we mentioned before. He's been able to land partnerships with HBO, Verizon Media, and Die Diageo. Diageo for yeah. the Film Festival. All right. So you, are, you also wrote and directed two feature films, uh, The Love Potion in 2010 and Venus de Macho 2019. So this guy, he's the real deal. He's talking about <laughs> how to make it in the industry. And if no one's opening the door for him, he's, he's doing it himself. So Danny, uh, tell me like what, how, how is it that you've arrived at this moment in your career? And, um, you know, tell us about your humble beginnings. Wow. Um, it's a lot to unpack, you know, and, uh, you know, right away, I guess, but First and foremost, thank you for inviting me to, you know, to your platform and, and to talk to, to your students and alumni. I'm, I'm grateful that, um, you know, I'm able to be here and enjoy a, a, an amazing career for the past 25 years. And it's been nothing but growth. And so I thank you. Um, anytime I have the opportunity to talk to, to you know, younger creatives, you know, I'll, I'll just, I, I jump on it because, you know, I, I really didn't have that when I got into the business, uh, especially being a, a person of color. It was like no one around me really did what I was trying to get into. And uh, it was real difficult. But, you know, through perseverance and, and you know, passion and, and really uh, loving what I do, um, I got to this place and I still got more places to go. Like, I'm still growing. Like, um so so yeah um you know let me uh like what what was what, what's your well, first where, question really? where was i mean there's a number of questions that i have for you <laughs> but where where are your native roots are you from los angeles are you from where where are you from? actually I, I was born in california um 
I was born in California, and uh, but my father got sick during the Vietnam era, so my mom, my mom had to go back to Panama. We're from Panama, so my my dad is Mexican American. Um, he was a captain of the Air Force in the U.S. Um, but you know, the Vietnam era was not kind to a lot of people. You know, from both sides of the uh, of the spectrum, and uh, he didn't do too well after that. Um, so. I grew up in Panama. Um, I grew up in a Caribbean household, single mom. Um, she she pretty much did everything she had to go, do to, you know, get us a good ed- education. Um, you know, down there, at least, if you come from humble beginnings, you know, the family's big. So, you know, there, there was a lot of help, you know, from the family. And uh, as soon as I was of age, she was like, look, you were born in the U.S. You got to get back out there and figure something out. So we uh, we wind up in New York, and I was like 15, 16 by the time I got to New York. Um, really didn't speak a lot of English. I had to kind of start from from the beginning, um, and uh, I discovered I discovered my passion, which was photography, and my second passion was hip hop and music. So put two and two together and uh I started just going going for it like nobody told me I couldn't so I um I started knocking on doors and and before you know it I started um to get a plethora of work that like basically solidified my name in the industry sure well you're far removed from Hollywood or any connections as you might possibly be, right? Anybody who's aspiring uh, to take the journey into multimedia production or understanding what that even means. Um, You went ahead, you have this can-do attitude, you figured it out, photography, Mm -hmm. um, music, um, and then film and film festival. I mean, so there seems to be no ceiling for you. Like you just keep going up. Uh, Where do you get that motivation from? Um, that's a good question. I mean, maybe it's something I just I had all my life, or maybe, maybe it was New York City and hip hop. Like, you know, once you, once hip hop started defining me, um, and, and the work that I was doing, I was, you know, rubbing elbows with, you know, African Americans and Latinos and, you know, anybody who was like, basically like just reaching for the stars, you know, and most of them, like across the board, we all came from humble beginnings. Like every rapper out there that right now is huge that I photograph. At one point we were, you know, it was, it was a humble beginning for everybody. So I think to see people growing and to see people acquiring wealth and to see people breaking down barriers, knocking down doors. Um, I was part of that, that DNA too. So um, I said, I can do it as well, right? And, and it was just photography, it was not you know music, but I was shooting a lot of music. I shot everybody, Nas, JC, Wu-Tang, Eminem, Mark Anthony, you know, all those people at one point were we were all just striving for, you know, greatness and uh, in what we do. And I, I wouldn't really say much about like it was really at that point it was not really about money. It was about loving what we do. Right. So because we never knew that we were going to have like this fruitful career, which is, you know, I love taking pictures. I love making films. They love making music, you know somehow I was like the visuals to their, to their also, or I was an extension to their create creativity and, and vice versa. And, um, you know, I, I think that as you start to really enjoy the, the fruits of, of your labor and, and your, the seeds that you plant start, you know, providing, um, you just keep going. Like there's no, there's no going back. Like, and I think that makes you also, to answer your question, that also makes you entrepreneurial, right? Like, I had so many times as I was, like, starting, like, so many times, so many people, you know, not my peers, but, like, my elders, 
would be like, hey, you gotta, you gotta get some steady because you know this photography thing might, might not work out, you know. And I was like, like I just, this record just printed a million pictures of mine, you know. This record just sold a million copies with my picture on it. My pictures just got reproduced a million times, like, but our peers will not get it. Like not our peers, like our 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 elders, right? Like our parents, you know, or you know, our, our tios, our tias, like it, it didn't, they just couldn't comprehend. So, you know, there was one photographer in the family, who was my uncle, and he wasn't doing too well. So that was the only example of photography that my family will, will have. Like, you know, your uncle, your uncle is not doing too well, you know, you really want to get into this. And I was like, Anna Levobitz at the time bought a castle in like 1992, 1993, Google it, a photographer. You know what I mean? So if she bought a castle with photography money, like, why can't I do the same? Right. So I went for mine. It's like, I didn't really, really ask for permission. You know, I didn't ask for, you know, can I do this or not? I just went for it because I believe that I could do the same work that these people considered the greatness, the greatest, you know, we're doing like Anna Levobis, like her Ritz, like, you know, Avedon, like all these filmmakers also, like, you know, Quentin Tarantino, I was looking at their stuff and I was like, I can do that too, right? Maybe not, you know, the same of what they're doing, but like my own voice, I can do it, right? So, you know, it's um, it's something that I think that if you believe in, in, in what you're doing, like if you're in film school, you're in film school for a reason, right? You have some sort of passion. I don't think Nobody tries to, to um, study the arts of whatever the arts would be if you didn't have like, like innate curiosity about, you know, what is this like? You know, if you're good in math, if you're good in chemistry, if you're good in, you know, anything other than the arts, right? You will probably have that path, right? You came to the arts for a reason. And if, you're, if you were in it, just go for it. Paint every day, record every day, sing every day, dance every day, right? Eventually that passion is gonna turn into, you know, a small industry for you, right? So yeah. I think that was the key. Yeah, no, I mean, thank you for the insight. Um, there, you, you touched on a lot of topics that are interesting in terms of being entrepreneurial, um, but also your origin story, like where you come from. Like, um, I think we're the, some, from the same vintage mm. as Alex Ferrari, the podcast uh, indie film hustle guy says on his podcast, you know, we're, kind, we're, we're from the same era, you and I, in terms of age. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, you know, there weren't a lot of representation, representational figures of Latinos in that time. It was very limited. Um, and I think if you're entrepreneurial, you're going to figure it out. You're going to factor it in. You're going to try to make it work. You're going to study the arts in whatever form that is, whether it be uh, going to film school or an art school or going to your library, doing research, um, because that's what, that's what drives you. Um, I myself, my dad was a custodian. He cleaned, uh, you know, the schools. My mother was a seamstress um, mm -hmm. and she was a salesperson. She sold like Mary Kay. So from them, you know, I saw what was, what, what the limitations were and then what the possibilities were. And I'm first generation here. Um, obviously also um, I've grown up in LA, but I was well removed from the Hollywood machine. Like that was not my world. Um, but there's something to the entrepreneurial side of things um, that I definitely want to touch on today because I think as you've been moving up and like breaking these ceilings for yourself, you've traversed different areas of the industry, photography and music and film and, you know, all these um, endeavors that you've had. Um, and obviously you heard from your family in terms of what was possible and what wasn't possible, you know, um, at this moment in time, where do you see your future? Like in terms of what you're, what you've accomplished at, at this point in time and where do you want to go in the next few years? In, in the next few years, I, uh, 
Danny Hastings is going to be directing and producing a lot of content specifically for streamers, right? Like Netflix, like Hulu. And if, if that is not a possibility, then I'm going to produce for my own streaming network, right? That is, you know, the reality of it. The reality of it is that, you know, only uh, 4% representation of uh, Latinos are on the big screen, you know, and the small screen, right? So you're talking about, man, that, that number is dismal. You know, that number is, it, it's, it's horrible. Right. And, and it's been part of like a machinery that that you weren't included then. We're still not included now. You know what I mean? How come a, a population, you know, of Americans that is well into the 20 percent, you know, 25 percent, probably 30 percent in the future, you know, only has four percent representation, you know, of actors in front of the camera and behind the camera is even worse. It's ridiculous. Behind yeah. the camera. Behind the camera, you're talking about like 1% at the DGA, Directors Guild of America, Latinos, Latinos only form 1%. Right. So out of 100 directors, only one is Latino. Come on, man. Yeah, so I mean, that is and, not. And you see the, the, the consumer side, you know, mm -hmm. Latinos do attend a lot of theater events. They, we do go see movies right. or buying the right. streaming services. So right. I think, you know, the inequity there is definitely something we need to call out. Well, so it, it's not even calling out at this point. Like we, we had organizations that have been around for 25 years, 30 years, 10 years, 12 years, whatever. You know what I mean? And they, have, they, haven't, they haven't moved the needle up, right? They haven't moved the needle. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? I'm not going to name any names, but they know who they are right now. You know what I'm saying? And, and what happens is this, like, what happens is like some of the OGs right now think like, ah, oh, you know, we paved the wave. So you guys can, I will never speak like that to my people. You know what I mean? I will never speak like that to my people because the struggle is real. So what I'm doing is I'm creating an avenue so we can have a little more, you know, equal playing field for Latinos out there. You know what I mean? Out of one out of 100 directors, only one is DGA. Only one Latino is DGA. Like, how are you paving the way for us? You know what I mean? So we have to have action. And the action is put the money, put the money where your mouth is. Like, you, we have to invest in our community. We have to, you know, we, we can't really ask them to do it. They obviously weren't interested. And then I'm talking about the film industry. You know what I mean? But you're, you're doing something interesting in terms of the film festival route. Right. Like that avenue is something that is rarely heard of, like as a founder um, and as a person who manages the totality of the film festival. What got you into doing that? Was it just what we talked about? Yeah, it was passion, bro. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like, I'm really passionate about you know, my community and, 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 you know, equality. And, and I, I really love to do what I, I love my, I, to do my work. You know what I mean? Like I, I love shooting. I love directing, I love producing, you know what I mean? And um, the year before the Oscars hashtags uh, Oscars so white, I was watching the, the Oscars. And I think it was, um, uh, was it Alfonso Cuaron that directed the space movie with uh, gravity gravity who we'll says right yes right so you know i was watching and he won and you know it was it was like sandra bullock and i think it was like george clooney and and everybody was like ah mexicano and i was like you know hey i love his movies by the way this has nothing to do with against you know alfonso Cuaron. but then i was realizing like you know that's not really our voice here in the u.s you know what i mean like Alfonso comes from Mexico and he probably comes from, by now he's in a very elite status of, of filmmaking, right? Equivalent to Steven Spielberg, you know? Some might say yes, some might say no, but you know, some of us will probably say yes, right? He's, he's on that elite, right? You know, so, you know, I was like, but where are we? Where, where, where are our actors? Where are our filmmakers? Where, is, where are, you know, our community represented here in the US, you know, one of the largest demographics in the, in the country. And I just 
didn't feel like gravity really represented me. So I, you know, I started ranting on Facebook, whatever, social media. And I think somebody was like, hey, man, so stop fucking complaining. Do something about it. And I was like, yeah, I do have to do something about it, right? But I realized that making films, making my own, I had to, I put a stop to my own film that was like in the middle of a production because I was like, making one film is not going to change. I, we have to make a hundred films. We have to make a thousand films. You know what I mean? In order to really make an impact. So I was like, I'm going to create a film festival and I'm, I'm going to, I don't want my film festival to be the same, same old Latino film festival that all the other Latino film festivals are bringing the Alfonso Cuarones and bringing the Inaritus and bringing, you know, the, you know, Guillermo de Toros, which I love their films, but that doesn't really represent who we are. Also. I'm with you on that. I'm with you. Right? That doesn't 100%. represent. That doesn't yeah. represent us. Yeah. I need to know those same talents, but that come from LA, that come from Texas, that come from Miami, that come from Chicago, that come from Hialeah, that come from New York. You know what I'm saying? I need to know our talent that are equivalent to those three amigos you know, that came from here. So what do I do? The first American, Latino, U.S. domestic film festival. And you know how many entries I got? I got 500 entries, brother, that year. But that was that first year? That was the first year, 2015. I was like, bang, okay, so we have a movement here. You know what I'm saying? And after that, every year it's just been like boom, boom, boom. I don't take anything from our countries because not that I hate, you know, I just want to be very clear. I love where we come from and I love all the great films that come from Latin America, but films that come from Latin America, when you watch the first five seconds, you will see Departamento de Ciencia y Cultura, auspiciado por el Departamento de Arte, eh, you know, becado, you know, sponsors, like you see like five or six different sponsors from their country's art funds. Who's going to sponsor you here? Doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. So I created a festival with that mission. And guess what? We actually landed HBO and I went to HBO specifically and thank God for the, for, for, for the people at HBO. They saw the light. And I was like, the only way we're going to break this is like, I don't want money for the festival. I want you to give money to the filmmaker. So, so HBO gives three licenses each year directly from our festival to Latinx filmmakers so they can finally have, you know, some money so they can go and make their films. You know, That's a great. lot of film festivals right now, I they take thousands of dollars and they start doing parties and this and that and you know events and this and that what do the filmmaker get think about it zero. zero they may get a mention in variety they may get a mention in this it helps but it doesn't help them make the next film the only thing that is going to make them is going to help them make the next film is money because films it films are it's the most expensive art form you know, to choose. Yeah, you know? there, there, there's been a lot of discussion with my colleagues about the investment that other countries do to the film world in, you know, in their, their sectors, but they don't do it here in the US. Um, I've only come to know from funding sources through grants from nonprofits. Uh, and that's how we funded some of our documentary work, but it was a right. minuscule compared to what we needed to actually produce the film. So. It's been a lot of in-kind services and, you know, you can't, you can't feed your family with in-kind services. You, I mean, you can barely make the movie, yeah. um, but that's great that you were able to get HBO and have that recognition through them, giving some of the resources to the, to the filmmakers. Can you tell us um, what the process is in terms of once the film gets through for the submission, I would imagine it's like film freeway or something. Yeah, I mean, I rock with Film Freeway for, from the very beginning. I couldn't awesome. rock without, without a box. They were just on their way down. And it, I, I couldn't even, 
And I was like, now nah, Film Free World was open. It was friendly. It was, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah it's it was still awesome. awesome to this and, day. and they're still, they're still, they haven't changed. And, and I called the person, you know, she, she answers my phone. We talk, you know, it's like, it's a real person actually talking, right? <laughs> it's so, not somebody in Amazon deep down in the jungle somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Washington. Right. So t- tell us, uh, walk us through. I'm a filmmaker. I submitted through Film Freeway for this film festival. What happens internally in terms of judging, in terms of getting the film through to the film festival? Right. So, yeah, you know, you submit the film and, you know, th- there's a process. You know, we have a uh, we have a programmer. Uh, shout outs to Manuel Solis. He was the programmer for this is our first year of programming because I was programming before. You know, and I'm getting so busy that I'm like now building the team. Like last year, I brought like last two years, we brought judges. So now we have judges and programmers. So we operating like a community and everybody comes from the community. The judges from last year were actually filmmakers from the year before. The judges this year were going to be filmmakers from the year before. Right. So, you know, it, it's like we are curating our own our own films. Right. I'm, I don't want to bring elite filmmakers from other communities we are choosing our own films so um the 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 judges and and the programmer the programmer selects you know the vision for this year's uh film this this year was very unique we were from a pandemic uh but believe it or not we were not shy from you know getting like low numbers on on submissions we still were up there with submissions so our filmmakers went out there con ganas and through pandemic, we produce films, you know. So, um, you know, like every film festival, we we have to select. We can, not everybody can come on, you know what I mean. So, right, I was about know, to first, say you had five, but, you, yeah, you so, had five hundred the first year. Like yeah, that's a that's a lot. Yeah, to go we through. we we get we we actually average about a hundred films per per year, right? Yeah. So twenty five percent. You have a twenty five percent chance. Uh, you know, sometimes it's 400 films, you know what I mean? You have like, you have a good chance, like our film festival has a good chance for you to make, for you to come in, right? Um, you know, and, and uh, yeah, we, we actually announced the selection uh, about two days ago. We're about to go live with our website with, with all the blocks and everything. So we're working this weekend um, through where the festival is curated and, um, yeah, it's just like every festival, you you have to go through the process of being judged and and uh, and and just the best that, ones win, you know. <laughs> yeah. So so I've been a I've been a and I want to make I'm sorry I want to make yeah. something clear, right? So the festival, official Latino film festival, hosts the HBO Latinx short film competition. What is the HBO Latinx short film competition? Is a a uh, brand created by HBO that only the official Latino uh, hosts, and they choose three films from the festival to be licensed to stream on the HBO platform. So, so far we have uh, officially um, placed six films from the festival directly to HBO, and they enjoy a um, licensing fee right and a deal with hbo and on top of that there's been about 10 films outside of those six that also got to hbo by way of you know the synergy right so there's about 16 films from the hbo from the official latino film festival on hbo right now written directed and or produced by latinx filmmakers here in the u.s and and there's been an alumnus from the la film school that went through that program, right? Yes. Alex? Uh, Alex Ferrofino, uh, they won Best Film two years ago uh, with um, Sleeping Into Darkness, and uh, they won the uh, HBO uh, Latinx Show Film Competition. They were the first films to to win it, along with with Pepito and La Serenata. That's great. Um, I think... um, you know, it's great to get into a film festival and to be recognized in this capacity is just fantastic. I know that I think his film is on HBO Max right now. Yeah, it is on HBO Max. Um, you know, the other thing I wanted to to ask you, I've been a screener I've, I, for a film festival and I also just did a marketing campaign for the Q Films Film Festival in Long Beach. 
And I know this COVID era has taken a, a big hit in terms of attendance or people wanting to attend the film festival and all that. What was the trajectory that you guys took from going from a live event to, did you guys go into an online platform? Yeah, last year we, we, we went straight up uh, online, no event. Uh, and we started streaming. And the beauty about that was that we were able to reach more people, right? Sometimes what happens with live events, sometimes, you know, hey, if you're not those, you know, 100 people inside the movie theaters, you know, nobody else is going to see your film, right? Uh, and some festivals do really bad. Some festivals have like 10 people sometimes, in, you know, in, uh, in, in, <laughs> in their screenings. We pack the houses, man. So with that being said, online was even better at this point because now you went international. Yeah, well, not international. I'm really not interested in international. I'm really interested. No, but you US. had international viewers, I would imagine, because we, you were online, right? Yeah, we 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 had some, but um, I think the the film festival is um, what do you call that geo tag? Like it's just really just. Oh US. right, 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 right. But if your film was from LA, now New York people are watching it. Miami people are watching it. Texas people are watching. It. Like everybody's watching. It. Remember, we're 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 like twenty million over here. So you know, there's I think even more. I forgot the number, but you know, I think we're like fifty million, right? Some I, I don't I don't remember yeah, I think the, like we're the like latest numbers. Million Latin or something. But it's so, it's up there. So it's up there. You know, it it is so so I I'm content with people here in the U.S. Latinos in the U.S. watching our films because. If we don't watch our content, right? Then who else? And the beauty about it too is that our content is in English. Yeah. Ninety-eight percent of our films are in English. So, you know, African Americans are watching it. White people are watching it. Asians, you know, you name it. Like Everybody. you can watch our films if you speak English. Everybody under the rainbow. Hey, I did want to make, mention David Manzanales was. Uh, with Alex Fudafino, with yeah. uh, with the film that was that we just talked about, and he's also an alumnus. So shout out to really. Alex. Really, hey, listen. So we just worked. I don't know. Uh, we just. Uh, I, I'm such a big fan of those guys. I hired them for my last uh, music video with the RZA, the RZA Wu Tang Clan nice. coming at you 2020 2021. Which is, I just directed a video, and I was like, hey man, I love the the the, the way you guys work you know, your team and shout out. Oh, to what, what awesome synergy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and not only them, like everywhere I go, I actually hire people from the festival. I was in Chicago. I hire alumni over there. I was in New York. I bring people like, because the beauty about the festival is that it connects us. And it's not only me, actually, there are filmmakers like connecting with each other at the festival that like in New York, they didn't know like, Oh my God, I didn't know you were so, they connect with each other in the festival and they work together. And, and, and I love that for my people because I don't think before, um, you know, there was that synergy happening until official Latino came in. Right. Um, hey, before, congratulations on that. Cause that yeah. creating that space is, is pretty unique. Yeah. And, and it, it happens more like actually even so even like a, a couple, a couple that got married even met at our festival. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so, you know, we even went beyond just, you know, networking, but even a couple met at and our love, festival. So. Love works in mysterious ways. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, so, I, hey. I, I wanted to ask you, uh, now that you've gone online and you're going to go back to live, if you, you're you going back to live, but um, is it going to be a hybrid? We, yeah, we're going hybrid. We're only yeah. going to have a live, uh, basically a live segment for the awards. That's it. You know, we're going to have some screenings. We're going to have screenings of like the award winnings, winners and, 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 and that's it. It's not going to be like a full, full festival yet. COVID is still very real. I just came from Miami yeah. and out there people were like, COVID doesn't exist. And before you know it, there's some people catching COVID. So, you know, it's a, it's a strange it, world. It's a real thing, man. It's a real thing. So we respect the virus. And, you know, all I can say is work around it. But yeah, we're going to do a hybrid. Um, some of our, our, our partners um, definitely, you know, one who are welcoming it. So, you know, as long as we 
you know, test everybody before they come in, all that stuff. Everybody's, you know, safe environment. We can actually do a little live event. Yeah. That's cool. So for the filmmaker, there's more exposure because it's not just geolocated in one area physically. Now with the streaming service, people, you have more viewers. And we, found, we found that this year with Q, well, last year with Q Films, uh, when I was doing the marketing for them, that we did find we had international viewers for mm -hmm. a film festival that only happens in Long Beach. Right. Um, so it kind of was an opportunity. Um, right. Now, for those students or recent grads or alumni that want to submit to your film festival, when is when does the submission open for next year? Oh, it's probably going to be like sometime in January, February. Yeah. So coming up. Yeah, February, probably. So opportune time for those that just finished the film or that, that they're in post-production, mm -hmm. like keep your eye out uh, yeah. for this film festival. And we have and we have a long window too. Like I open it from like February to like July. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know, we, you have a long, even like people are like, oh, I'm finishing my film. It might happen to August. So, you know, it, it, it's that like you have to kind of accommodate yeah. to yeah. the community. You yeah. know what I mean? You have to accommodate to the community. And that's one of the things that I, as a film founder, if it doesn't work for the filmmaker, I'm not going to do it. You know what I mean? If if there's a partner that wants to be like, we're gonna we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. It's like, how is it gonna benefit the filmmaker? So if submission. So the submission process, uh, once it opens up, it, it is tiered, right? In terms of like what the cost is to submit. Yeah. Uh, the sooner you get it, the cheaper it is. The later you get it in, the more expensive it is. Yeah. Exactly. And that's yeah. pretty standard for all film festivals. That's pretty standard. I mean, it starts like a, a, like a 20 bucks, you know what I mean? And stays like that for a couple of months. And then it goes up to like 30. I don't think we've passed the 40, 40 range. Um, and even so, you know, there's discounts going around and stuff like that, you know. So, um, but that's like the last, the last weekend. And I mean, you know, it's work, right? It's like you're creating films. You know, we love to do it for free, but people have to watch. I got to pay programmers. I got to pay this. You know, it's it's like any little every little helps. Um, yeah. So talk talk to me about the the categories because you you have um, and I'll list them right now. Maybe you can expand on them. You have um, uh, well, the I guess I'm reading the awards uh, section. You award mm -hmm. prizes for drama, comedy, documentary exceptional artistry music video webisodes sketch yeah. comedy video blog out of this world award cinematography script actor actress like you really do recognize a lot of the talent we do in man and the genres we do let me tell you there's been some tears in those awards too man people get those awards and and, 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 and they feel you know they get emotional you know because for the longest time you know we don't get recognized you know what I'm saying? There's actors in these films that have been acting for, you know, 10, 15 years, you know, and, it, and it's hard for them to break through because always the roles come, the Latino stereotype, the, you know, you need to be a certain, can you, can you exaggerate the accent? Like white people write films for us with a Latino landscape, right? Like they think that, you know, Latinos are a certain way because they don't have really no connection with our community. Their only connection is probably, you know, their maid, their gardener, you know what I'm saying? And they just, gang whenever, member. whenever you see an Adam yeah. Sandler film, guarantee you there's going to be a gardener and a maid. I guarantee you, man, watch those films again. You know what I mean? And it's like, coño, bro, like, like this guy doesn't know a comedian that, that could that, that, that could be at the part, like he can't bring John Leguizamo, Rosie Perez be on his films. And it's, but it's because we're not the in the room. We're, we're not in the room. I get, we're, I get, you, I get. Yeah, yeah. We're, I get we're passionate not, about it. We're not the, at, at the executive level. We're not, you know, the decision makers. We're not funders. Right. You know, that affects everything. Right. You know? So, so the room can shift an official Latino. We are yeah. Right. In official Latino, we are the room. You can watch a film on space with Latinos. You can watch a, a, a drama like Slipping into Darkness 
right? And, and it's a it's a human human the humanization of 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 a Latino that has gone through, you know, a violent, uh, uh, you know, upbringing, or 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 his father wasn't that, and then he's trying to get away from it, but you know, he gets sucked back into that. You see, you feel the pain. You feel the pain of the character. You feel the pain of the family, the pain of the kids. And you have, you have a film like, like Serenata that is basically an LGBTQ family film, right? About a family that, you know, that, that, found, that, that has a boy that, that is identified as LGBTQ community and the father who's, you know, a straight man or, or a heterosexual, right, says, that's my son, no matter what. I gotta, I love him how he is. I gotta do what I gotta do. See, breaking the stereotypes. You know what I mean? Then you have a film, film like One, Two, Three, All Eyes on Me, written by a, by a Latino director about a, 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 a school shooter and what the victims went through. So it, it's not, you know, we're in the room, we are creating that room. Our room is full of executives, Latinos, that are writing, directing, and, and producing the films that we want to see. No longer are we, you know, the help, you know? Yeah. How they see us, right? Official Latino Film and Arts Festival. Um, okay. they, uh, you know, you can go out and find the, do a search on Google. You can You'll come up. <laughs> you can submit in starting January, February. So keep your eye out on that. Um, I know we're gonna take some questions and um, I wanted to just uh, bring that up because we got about 15 minutes left. Yeah. Um, and and I, I definitely wanna just talk about a little bit about your history then too as a, as a, as a creator, um, right. because you have such a diverse portfolio. I checked out your website. Uh, one of the best uh, content creator websites out there, I think. And, you know, because as creators, a lot of us from the LA Film School are not great at marketing or branding ourselves. And that's really important because people look at not only your work, but they're also looking at how you present yourself. So tell us um, a little bit how you present yourself to the world in terms of what you're sharing outside of the film festival. So as a creator. As a creator, I feel that I do have to, um, you know, showcase the best work available to the clients. The clients are not going to hire you because, you know, you're, uh, you know, a person of color or white or whatever. The clients is really just going to hire you because of the best work that you have in your reel. So my work speaks for itself. When it comes to photography, when it comes to music videos, when it comes to branded work, when it comes to, to any work that I do, it has to be competitive, right? In, in a sense of, and I, when I mean competitive, I don't even mean like competing with Fulanito and Fulanita out there, you know? It, I, I mean competitive like for me, right? Like I know that the quality of work that you're seeing is the best, right? So I, I think that you have to really, really like ask, like basically ask yourself, am I already prepared enough, enough to, to really, you know, compete out there, right? You have to like, you have to study the entire platform, right? Like when I was, when I was uh, developing my photography style, right? We didn't have any internet. Right, I had to go to the library. I had to buy books. I was reading how to print work, how to, you know, manipulate negatives. I had to, had to, um, you know, frame a shot. Like I really, I'm, I'm self photography and cinematography. I'm self taught, right? Um, so I had to really rely on studying the craft. And once you study the craft. You're able to, you know, basically bring the level of, of quality, right, that you're presenting. And that's that's how I, I broke the doors, right? Then I found, you know, I found my market, which was 
definitely, um, and, and it was something that I didn't pursue. It just kind of happened organically, right? Where I was able to share my work with people that 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 were at the same level as me, and 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 we were like in the same room. And I was like, here it is, check it out. So and and we grew together. And as you grow together, those people that are in the same level as you right now, you grow together and you start hiring each other, you start, you know, passing. So you gotta build your network from from scratch, right? Um, and and as you build, everyone else is building around. Yeah, um, you have you have a, a really good quote. Uh, your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. That's been the philosophy of my life, man. Like, to be honest with you, I, I you know, give it my all. And uh, I try to inspire as many people around me that, that work, you know, with me. I, I think maybe hopefully they can say the same, um, you know. But yeah, that, that's really the basis of it all. Like, you cannot be a filmmaker and have a successful career if you don't enjoy making films. Like, it's impossible. Like, if you're like, oh, another day. Oh, it's just, you know, got to wake up early to do this damn shoot. Like, every shoot for me is exciting. Whether I'm shooting the RZA, right? in the desert with dancers and smoke machines and, you know, great production team, or I'm shooting, you know, an ad for an insurance company and I have to interview a teacher. You know what I mean? Like I'm just motivated. My motivation going to work is exactly the same. I'm always like a high level. You know what I mean? Like I'm never like, oh, this work is, I got to do this for No, man. <laughs> I'm... It's Boy, easy to yeah. get into that mode when, when, when it you all pay comes me down. A <laughs> hundred thousand dollars or you pay me a thousand bucks. I'm there showing up with my coffee in the morning, like you're hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. Because I know that not going to work like that, I'm gonna be behind a desk. Look where I'm at right now, under a halo. <laughs> <laughs> Look where I want. <laughs> The, the angel has descended to talk to us today. <laughs> uh, no, there are a lot of, uh, there's fun and success. There's excitement in doing the work. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a lot to failure and learning from ones uh, stumbling upon accidents or things that happen that, that aren't the outcome that we were once looking for. Um, you know, how, how did you deal with, um, there's a question that I'm pointing this towards that just came mm -hmm. in. How do you handle being rejected from multiple film festivals? But also a little further than that, how do you deal with all you know your failures? How do you how do you overcome that? Right. Um, well, rejection rejection is a. I mean, it's a. I mean, it's a funny word because rejection in some parts means something else and rejection in some other means something else, right? Like for example, um, rejection when you're trying to court somebody, right? No means no, right? No means no. If you're trying to, you know, holler at somebody, you wanna date somebody, you wanna try to go out with somebody, whether men, women, when the person says no, that 100% means no. But when you are creating a, a connection with a client and when you're trying to create a connection professionally for somebody to see the work, no today could mean yes tomorrow. And I'm gonna explain. Um, I actually, on my first film, the Love Potion, um, I got rejected by HBO. I sent my film through HBO. And, and that's really the time that I was like, and, and, and that happened to me, obviously, when I was like sending my book, my, my, my portfolio with all my photographs, get work. I got rejected many times. 
But I also got hired by the same people that rejected me a few times. So you have to understand that no means no right now for many reasons. It could be because you're working in a line with the festival or you're working in a line with a client or, but you know, those clients, those festivals always come back next year. And you sh shouldn't be like, just be like, oh, they don't want my work. You know, you need to always be reminding them of what you're doing. Because when you're reminding them of what you're doing, like, hey, I remember you said no now, but hey, check this out. Look what I shot. And look what I, once in a while, keep in touch. Out of sight, out of mind, right? So back to the HBO story. 2010, I um, submitted a film called The Love Potion. I don't do really great films. <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> I look at my film and like, ah. Okay, you know, I'm always like, you know, are we ever satisfied? Well, I've <laughs> never enjoyed a full budget for a film. Like I do my music videos, right? For music videos, I got the world, I got best DPs, producers, you know, like I move an army and we go and get done. For my films, it was always like me with a camera trying to do things that, you know, it's challenging, right? So I'm always like, oh, I'm going to see better, you know. Everybody was hungry and said we did not. <laughs> people needed to go and eat. <laughs> you know, people didn't show up on time. You know, stuff happens when you have no money, right? And and I feel the pain. A lot of our films get done that way, right? So I sent my film that actually showcased at the New York Latino Film Festival. Shout out to the New York Latino Film Festival and Calixto, always looking out for the kid. Um, so I premiered to like sold out funny comedy it's on the love potion movie.com for us want to see it still see it it's free um so the love potion movie uh, i was able to license the film i was able to license the film to to uh mtv3 and i was able to license the film to cine latino so i make money with my film congratulations but before before that i was actually had the audacity to go to HBO and be like, hey, here's my film. You know, I met the, when, at the film festival, I met the, uh, the uh, acquisitions, VP, VP of acquisitions. And um, I got her card. I was like, hey man, I got this film, da da da. I want to show it to you. She's like, yeah, sure, send it to me, no problem. She sends me the most beautiful rejection letter I ever seen in my life, man. I still have that letter. The letter <laughs> said, um something along the lines of like hey we saw your film uh while it's a great film it doesn't hold up to the quality standards that we are known for as hbo you know what i mean like and i was like damn it she's right you know there was some shaky cameras you know there was like some bad sound you know and and then she at the end she says but if there's anything else that you're coming up with in the future, come and see me again, right? That's the only line of, I, I, I remember. Like, you know, that line, that open door, it was no today. But she said, if there's anything else in the future, come and see me again. And every once in a while, I'll be like, hey, how you doing? I got something. Until it hit. I landed my first film on HBO with a uh, director from the festival. Uh, her name is Al Alba Garcia. And we did a film called Dacto Pactain, which was a puppet film about Hurricane Maria. And um, the film also included an indigenous language from, from the Taino, from the Taino indigenous people from Puerto Rico. And it was just a beautiful film. It was also Proudly, proudly sponsored by um, Heather Henson, the, the the Henson family. Heather Henson, the daughter of Jim Henson. Jim Henson. So those, for those who, who don't know, they created the Muppets, right? So here they are. They funded a little film about indigenous uh, uh, Taino Taino uh, Indians from Puerto Rico, and, and it was kind of like an education film, beautiful film. Shout out to Alba Garcia, always so amazing, uh, an amazing creator. And I came as a producer and an editor for the film. I shot it too. She directed it. So I, you know, collaborated. And I was like, hmm, 
let me go to, you know, to that, to that email once again. I say, hey, you know, I shout, shout out to, to Leslie Cohen for, uh, for doing such an amazing work at the uh, HBO uh, Film Festival. And, uh, and, and, and listen, she, she, she loved the film. She loved the film, and and so and so a lot can. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a great. And and that was before. That was before they were sponsoring the festival, so I was like, hmm, I like <laughs> this film. I have a hundred films to show you. You know what I mean? And she was like, Oh, I like the idea. And uh, Lucinda Martinez was running. The, the marketing department, um, Jessica Vargas, uh, Maggie, uh, a, a lot of the women from there, like basically were like, yeah, this makes this perfect sense for the brand. And they gave us a deal. So now because of that rejection letter, right? Said, whenever you have something else, just come and show it to us. You know, I was able to turn a rejection into you know, into a positive. So, you know, don't never take a rejection as a definite no. It's always a maybe, right? It's always a maybe. It means no right now, but like, you know, maybe if you have something else, it'll be the right time in the right place, right? And um, you have to you have to manage that. You have to manage that with film festivals as well, right? Oh, they didn't take my film. Ah. Another film festival is going to take it. Right. And then you also need to network. Right. And and meet people, go to festivals, be online, connecting with people, show your film. Um, yeah, that that's how I handle. Rejection. Yeah. Rejection. Rejection is hard for many. It's something that you have to work through. Um, you know, I think uh, I used to say, oh, I feel bad for actors. They get rejected from their auditions, but producers and directors also get rejected all the time. So, what yeah. Happened? But, you know, actors, <laughs> actors handle it better. You know, actors understand that rejection comes, comes part of, it's part of their career, right? So yeah. they, for every 50 auditions, they get like one or two. And that's where they focus on it. And, and when you get one or two, that's, that's the one, right? You only need one hit, right? So, um, yeah, I will, I will say, you know, always understand that it's, it's a growing career, right there's a there's rejection is part of the deal but but you know don't let a no destroy you or break your dreams like you know it will it will change eventually right and think about it like this like especially if you start right you know a doctor or a lawyer right they don't they don't start their career until like 12 years of like school dude a doctor don't start making money until like after eight years of school, two years of special grad school, two years of like being a, a what do you call an intern in a hospital or you call that a resident doctor. They don't start making money until like 12, 14 years. You know what I'm saying? So right. for a filmmaker, you, you out of college, you out of school, it's going to take you a couple of years to get to get the flow of things. You know what I mean? And then, but once you get it, because it comes, you own that flow, right? So I will say, make sure you manage that and don't let the word no, um, you know, break you right now. It's part of, it's part of what, we, what we came up with. Like, it's part of the deal. It's part of the gigs, you know? And sometimes it's not even about the artwork. Sometimes it's about, well, a lot of the times it's about like the right artwork and chemistry and, you know, the client, you know, and maybe relationships too, right? You know, when you're pitching your work, sometimes they rather people hire who they know. So start meeting people. If your circle around you is not hiring, move up to the next circle. You know, maybe you want to PA for, for a film that, that is being produced. Maybe you feel that you're better than a PA. You should be directing, but meeting people is what's going to get you in the door, right? So that's how I will handle it. That's how I would recommend people to. Well, thank you. It. 
Thank you for sharing that. I also wanted to share your reel. Oh, yeah, sure. So, I got to um, update that thing, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, can we play that? Absolutely. Awesome. Danny, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's great work. I think it's three. It's three billion now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three so, billion and counting. Yeah, no. I, I want to uh, just ask you one last question that came in through uh, our um, questions here. What's mm -hmm. one tangible piece of advice that you haven't mentioned yet that you can give to students or alumni who want to submit their films to film festivals? To a um, film festival? I think it's important to to recognize your the genre of film that you're that you're making you know and I mean uh but I don't want to say the wrong thing because I, I I almost feel like you know from a film festival point of view like I, I'll say like don't worry too much about the bigger festivals like Sundance and Tribeca and 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 all those film festivals and, and the only reason why I say that before anybody gets, you know, um, crazy with my statement is that those films, the submissions for those films are like thousands and thousands of films. You know what I mean? So your chance to get selected, it's very slim, right? So, you know, people put their hopes right away coming out of school like, the big festivals, right? And, and the problem with that sometimes is that maybe the boutique festivals that 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 are you know smaller will probably 
do better for you because one the the um the the, the their network maybe it's more community based right versus film elite based right um you know and, and you start getting maybe you know maybe more recognition and as you climb up in the festival circuit you know if you don't have a direct connection with them like you know there there are like Sundance Labs and you know Tribeca Axis and like all these you know uh workshops that they do that actually if you are part of those those uh programs and workshops you get first you know access to the festivals and they you know obviously they're 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 gonna they're, they're gonna look out for you that way right but when you are got cold you know open on them you're competing with a massive amount of films and you know it, it's 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 a tough one right so my advice is that don't get so hung up if you get rejected in those film festivals do put your heart and money you know on the smaller festivals because you also learn from that smaller experience right like you you learn how they operate but by the time you do three or four of those you might be ready for those Tribeca, Sundance, you know, South by South that, that are more, you know, the, the experience is, is, is way different, right? Because who doesn't love to go to the festivals, right? So um, that would be my, my, my only advice on it. Like, you know, start like identifying who are your more reachable, you know, festivals and, 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 and work it out that way, right? If going to i mean hey if you got an outstanding gem that by all means when people watch that film they just you know fall on their backs because of the film then by all means go for it you know but even that sometimes you know doesn't get you in because of the volume that those you know film festivals get like if we get in like three four hundred five hundred films they get in like four or five thousand films it's crazy. It's, it's a crazy. it's a large amount, but be persistent. Yeah. Never give up. Um, Danny, I just, Danny, I want to say thank you for your words of wisdom. Oh man, you're welcome. Your inspiration. Uh, I think uh, it'll serve a lot of the viewers well to take your advice. Um, I also wanted to thank the uh, Los Angeles Film School Alumni Association and the Los Angeles Film School for putting this event on. Cecilia Berry and all her team under the events department yeah. at the LA Film School. And of course, Alex Rufino for connecting us and making Absolutely. this happen. Uh, well, did you wanna, did, yeah, did you wanna say any last things before we close out? Yeah, I wanna invite everyone, like all the, uh, the alumni to, to come and um, check out the festival and no charge. We're gonna have a little code, uh, a code for you guys um, through, through, the, uh, through, the, through the student department of, of, of of the Los Angeles Film School. So you can enjoy the code and you can actually check out all the films for free. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, thank you for having me. I, I speak passionately, um, you know, about the community because, because it's painful. It's painful, it's painful to watch. And I, I think the only ones responsible for it is the industry that doesn't recognize us as uh, as a power as the powerful community that we are, but I'm not asking for favors and I'm not asking for handouts. We're doing it ourselves, and that's you know that's the only way we can because they're not they're never going to give it to us. We have to go and break the doors and just get in the room and create our own room, right and. That's all I can do right now, mi gente. So thank you for having, uh, thank you for having me, and and um, check out officiallatino.com. Get familiar with the festival. Follow me on Danny Hastings all across the board. You know, I'm Team Follow Back. So you follow me, I follow you. I followed you today, so hopefully all right, you man. follow me back, man. I get you, Mario. <laughs> all right, so I, I thank you again. I think uh, we do have to pave our own ro road sometimes. Be an entrepreneur, be a filmmaker, always be creating. I just want to mention a couple of events that are coming up uh, for the students. 
There's a Halloween event happening today uh, at six o'clock, so shortly. So hopefully have, you have a good time. Check your Facebook page or the newsletter. There's a military annual salute Friday on November 12th at five o'clock. So please tune in as we celebrate our veterans. Uh, students, keep checking your newsletters and social media because you're gonna miss out on events if you don't check it. So again, my name is Mario Deboa. Thank you very much and we'll see you soon. Yay, put that beep.